Bessie. You might already be aware of this, but I am your soon-to-be husband's mother, and I'm here to have a word with you. And the word I plan to have with you today is regarding you wanting to become a wife in my family, aiming for the wealth we have. And after giving your plans good thought, I've come to decide that I no longer want you marrying my son. So please, leave my son alone as you go off and find a new man that is much more your style. Huh? This is Kathy then, right? Andy's mother? Yes, that is right. I'm sure you remember that time you came over to our house. You and I exchanged phone numbers in case we ever needed to contact one another. Yeah, I do have memories of that. Um, you do know that today is the day of our wedding, and you're asking me to leave your son, my fiancé, right? Can you tell me what the problem is? And just as I said, I'm well aware that you plan to become a wife in my family, with the sole purpose of getting your hands on our wealth. You think that I'm after your guy's wealth? I assume that, due to your past of having a poor education, the only way to get this information across to you is by telling you straight. And you having come from a foster home means that you will cause a lot of embarrassment if you become a part of my high-class family. Hence the reason why I'm asking you to stop bothering my son with marriage. That's what this is all about. Do you understand now? Because not only is this something I want from you, but something that even Andy wants. But you are aware that we have our wedding today, right? I haven't been trying to hide my past from you in any way either. And I'm not hiding any secret goals of mine either. I'm not saying that I'm okay with what you're asking from me right now either. But if you all really feel that way about me, please tell me this a lot sooner. You acting as though you deserve to be told this any sooner is yet another reason we don't want you in our family. It's a clear result of your lack of any decent parenting when you were younger. If you really feel as though you deserve to know how we feel about you sooner than the day of your wedding, then maybe you should have been apologizing to us from the start. We've been waiting for a while now to hear you say sorry to all of us. You've been waiting to hear... An apology from me? Up until today, we expected you'd be coming to us with an apology about how you are low class and were raised in a foster home. And you should have followed that with a thank you for allowing you to come into our family. And, after your thanks, told us that we are free to treat you as strictly as possible to keep you in line and turn you into a respectable wife. Had you done all of that... We wouldn't have had to tell you our true feelings on the day of your wedding. But of course, you never did do any of that. Well, it's too late for any of that now, Bessie. As I no longer want to think about your dirty blood mixing in with the perfect blood of my family. Um, I see. Well then, what should I be telling all the people that plan to show up to our wedding today? We've already begun telling all of our friends and family that the wedding has been cancelled, and that you will no longer be marrying my son. So all you have to do is tell your family and friends about the news. I'm already at the church right now, though. Then you can tell them as they show up today for your wedding. I see. Then I guess I have no other choice now but to do that. Oh, it's not like that'll be a tough task for you, though. As we are all well aware, you have no family, and barely any friends worth inviting, so you won't have to tell many people to go home. <laughs> oh, your lack of any good family or friends is yet another point that proves you were raised poorly. <laughs> My. Connor, are you already on your way to the church? Well, unfortunately, the wedding has been cancelled, so I'd like you to start heading back home if you're already on your way. What? Bessie? I was just talking with my CEO about how your fiancé caught off the wedding with you and even the marriage, but I didn't want to believe him. I was told that because I was raised in a foster home, they don't want me as part of their family. Huh? Right now, I've been talking with Andy about it. But he told me that whatever his parents decide regarding him, he cannot fight back against them. 
Why the hell would he say that? I understand that you're going to start getting upset over all of this, but one thing's for sure, and that's that the wedding is cancelled. I'm sorry to have to tell you this right now, but can you start helping me tell the others about the tragic news? I'm already at the church now, so anyone that doesn't get the message in time and shows up will be told by me at the front doors. Um, uh, um, alright. <laughs> Bessie, are you alright? I'm fine, Connor. Thanks for asking, though. Actually, after telling everyone that the wedding wasn't happening, I had a lot of things to take care of at the church, and didn't have any time to dwell on the cold truth. <laughs> well, to think that you didn't have time to think about what had happened must be pretty nice for you, but the timing for all of that was very poor, and a lot of people were upset to hear last minute that your wedding was cancelled and that their time was wasted. However, they were glad to hear all of that before getting in their cars and making the drive out, and... I'm sure that you rushing to tell them all after such sad news was keeping your mind off a lot of things. But I know that deep down this all hurts a lot and you're just trying to hide the pain now. You're that type of person after all. Connor. When you tell me things are fine after something like this, I know that things are actually not fine at all. But listen, even though his mom told you that the wedding was canceled today and that she doesn't want you marrying her son... Andy still hasn't said he doesn't love you anymore, nor that he doesn't want to be with you. But I'm sure he's not there with you now supporting you through this, so I'll come to you right away. You shouldn't have to be alone after your special day was ruined. So, I'll be there soon and we can start talking about what'll happen next together. Mm, Alright. Thank you. Bessie. Now that you are past having the wedding cancelled, there was one important thing I forgot to mention. The reason behind this whole unfortunate event ever happening in the first place is in fact due to you being a disgraceful foster child. And therefore, you'll need to pay my son a settlement for wasting his time. <laughs> I'm the one that'll have to pay a settlement? And of course, you'll have to pay the 100% cancellation fee for the wedding since it was cancelled on the day of. You guys were the ones that asked me to leave your son last minute. And because of that, I don't feel that I'm the one who'll need to pay anything. Oh, so you're still going to try and fight this. I'm not going to fight you guys on anything. I'm just telling the truth. You really were raised with no support from any parent. It's made apparent by your lack of manners and lack of common sense. Do you understand me, though, Bessie? I'm just trying to let you know what's going to happen so that you can prepare. And there's one more thing I want to tell you about so you don't have any more incidents like today. In a society like ours, you being on the bottom rung of the ladder means you cannot fight back against what us higher class say. You being low class means that you need to try harder to be a something in this society. And that means you have to stop going after people like my family. What do you mean by that? I'm saying that you are nothing more than a slave to us high class people. Oh, I shouldn't have to be explaining any of this to you in such long-winded sentences. But you did end up never having any decent education, nor any parents to teach you how to be a respectable human. Then, let me ask you one thing before we end this conversation. If me being raised in a foster home means that I'm low class, does that mean the same for my brother, who was also raised in a foster home? <laughs> you should already know the answer to that! Oh my, it is so difficult having to talk to someone who was never properly raised by parents. <laughs> I'm beginning to tire out. Is that so? Then I suppose I'll have to pay that settlement to you guys as well as pay off the cancellation fee to the wedding organizers. Huh? You will? I thought you'd try to fight back harder, but instead you're acting like a respectable adult now. I'm sorry for cutting into this conversation uninvited, but I had no choice. My name is Connor, and I'm Bessie's older brother. My- I never wanted to see someone talk to my sister the way you have been. And that's why after watching it go on for a few minutes, I had to take her phone from her and step in. And to try and help you understand that I'm now holding the phone, I tried surprising you by saying that I would pay the money you're asking for, 
as I know she never would. Sorry for being here without asking prior. From now on, I'll be the one continuing this conversation, and feel free to keep calling me Connor. Well, even though you have stepped in to take care of business for her, it doesn't change the fact that she's a mannerless and stupid woman. And actually, you're even worse than her, considering you never bothered to come and see her fiancé's parents before the wedding to introduce yourself as her brother. I'm sure that my sister did tell you for a while that I was overseas for work and could not be here to meet you all. Of course, if you guys had all made it clear that I needed to introduce myself before she could marry your son, I would have made an effort to come back. However, you guys would have become aware that I'm not from the same family as Bessie, and that would mean you all most likely never think of me as a brother, therefore making it meaningless for me to come see you all. I was already told by Bessie that you made it clear that you had no interest in anyone that wasn't related to her by blood. Well... Even if you guys see one another as brother and sister, without being related by blood, that is only due to you being a foster child yourself, and both growing up in that horrible foster home. That makes both of you low-class freaks in this society, and you being around to introduce yourself to us would only have made things worse. So I suppose it is a good thing you stayed away. Now as far as your husband and your son Andy... Could you please go and tell them that I'll be the one to pay for the wedding being cancelled and for the settlement? Why should I have to be the one to tell them? They don't need to know who you are. They need to think the money is all coming from Bessie. Just pay in her name and we can put everything behind us and go our separate ways. Well, the reason I want you to tell them that I'll be paying is none of your concern, Kathy. Huh? If you could just go and tell them that I'll be paying, you'll be able to find out all you need to know. And as for what happens after you tell them about me, you will only be talking to me about it. So please leave my sister out of your mess. Connor! Um, if you're getting this message right now, Bessie, can you please get your brother and have him reply to me? Did your husband and son's reaction to the news finally open your eyes a little? I'm so very sorry for what I've done earlier. I never expected to be getting an apology from you so soon. Well, after they told me, I had no other choice but to apologize to you right away. Who would have expected that... Who would have ever known that you'd be one of the sons of that very highly distinguished family that runs the company that works with my husband's company? In other words, the family that you were adopted into, they are the ones that run Frazier and Sons LLC and have all of that money? Yes, they are my family. And as for the wedding between my sister and your son, my father was invited to it by your husband and son to be there, as he is one of their greatest customers. And of course, I was going to be there as well with my father, as my sister had invited me to be there on her very special day. And to keep a lot of this information private, the only one that ever knew about me being the adopted son of the CEO of Fraser and Sons LLC, my sister and I only told Andy and no one else. Huh? My son... he knew about all of this? Yep. And that's why, when you and your husband said that you wanted him to call things off with Bessie, and cancel the wedding as well, your son was pretty upset, right? Uh, now that you mention it, when he was about to open his mouth to tell me something, I assumed it would be nothing important to my husband or I. And so I scolded him and said that he could not fight us on our decision. Actually, ever since we told him to leave Bessie and cancel his wedding, he's been locked up in his room, not speaking to any of us. Is that so? And? Huh? When adding up both the settlement you'd like to ask for and the cancellation fees for the wedding, how much does it come out to? That, that, that doesn't mean anything right now. If anything, we're going to be the ones paying for the cancellation fee as well as a settlement to your sister. We'll make sure that she gets the money she asked for, and that she's aware that we'll be handling all the costs. Please understand that. Understood, then. Then after today, I'd like for you all to continue talks about the settlement with a lawyer of mine, and you guys can discuss in detail what amount needs to be paid. And as for anything you'd like to say to my sister or I in the future... Please go through my lawyer with what you have to say, and he'll relay the message. Okay. Also, as for the phone number of my sister that you currently have, I'd like you to delete it for me. Understood.
Bessie, have you been able to get all the money from the settlement? I think it's all in my bank account now, Connor. So this should mean everything is pretty much done with, right? I believe so. I also heard that you and Andy were on the phone with each other recently, right? Yeah. We both talked about how we don't see either of us being able to get back together now, but we made it clear that neither one of us holds any hard feelings toward the other. Did he end up saying anything else? Well, he told me that he's going to start working on breaking away from his parents, and also that after his father retires from the position of CEO, he wouldn't be taking the seat. He then ended our conversation by saying that the whole reason all of this happened between us is because he wasn't strong enough to fight his parents on the way they thought of me, and just sat there, scared and weak. It looks to me like he wants to change the person he is, and wants to make himself a stronger man who isn't a puppet of his parents. I'm still not 100% convinced that a person like him will be able to totally break free of his parents, but he wants to become a stronger man after this. I have nothing else to say about him. By the way, about his father... I hear that he's planning to retire now, and will be giving his position as the CEO to someone else soon? That's right. Andy's dad said that he's not going to give the position to anyone in the family, though, as to preserve that his company be about the company itself, and not about making his family rich. So, he's making someone from outside the company the next CEO, so that there will be new ideas brought into it. And as for after that... I think Andy's dad is only going to be taking half the money he should be receiving in his retirement and will move out to the countryside. I see. But of course, his wife Kathy isn't too happy about what he's doing. She's told him that if he's not willing to keep the company in the family, she's going to divorce him. Actually, she's already handed in the divorce paperwork and is on a plane right now headed back to her hometown. Uh-huh. So that means... That's right. That whole family is no longer part of that company, and that spells the end to their wealth flowing in anymore. But I think that Andy's father is happy with the way he left his wife after what she'd done. <laughs> Just as my brother had told me, Kathy's husband ended up leaving his company in the hands of someone who wasn't their family and left town to move into the country. Because of that, Kathy divorced her husband and moved back to her hometown. But after only ever being a housewife to her husband from the start, and not having any work experience of her own in the current world, she had a hard time finding a job for herself. And the money she received in the divorce was only enough to carry her so far without having a job. And now she continues to whine and cry about what happened to her once high-class family. At one point, she even tried to get her son to come back to her and support her. But Andy only replied by saying that he himself was without a job. Well, that was all going on months ago. And these days, Kathy is doing a bit better, as she's found herself work in a hotel in her hometown, getting paid minimum wage for her work. She had always dreamed of being a rich woman who didn't have to do anything besides stay married to her CEO husband. But after letting that image of herself rule her... She made a huge mistake, and paid for it by losing everything. At the age she's at now, I don't expect she'll ever have a chance of going back to a life like that again. But I'd say she was never meant to be a part of the high class, as only those with manners and a proper education belong up there. And Kathy does not have either of those things. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.